Dave. You big kind of bastard! Where'd you get your treat? Jesus Christ! One gamba to alley. This is the Dave Duke podcast. My friend, we are about to do it again on the Dave Duke podcast. My name is Dave Duke. And I am in your ears. Hello. I love when some B-list, usually Z-list celebrity is like, Newcastle, I'm going to be in you this Saturday night. It's usually more of a Love Island or reality TV show or an artist who is well past their peak shouting, Tell them all, I'm going to be in you this Saturday night. I can't wait to be up inside your juices. Well, I'm up inside your ears right now. My stomach is so sore because I'm just after having a succulent Chinese meal. What's the charge? It was good. I needed it. I haven't been feeling great the last couple of days. On Tuesday morning, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning. The window was open. I had no pajama bottoms on. And I didn't feel great. And I struggled to get back to sleep. And then when I woke up at half eight on Tuesday morning, I felt like I was bet round the spot. It was nearly like there was a flu on coming. And by Tuesday at three o'clock, I was so tired. My yawns were so large that I was crying and I didn't feel great. Yesterday was a tough day. Wednesday, a little bit of improvement. Thought I'd go for Chinese. Not for a dirty feed, but to give myself some... Nutrients and vitamins and some curry. And I embarrassed myself in the Chinese because I was looking at the house specials and there was a Thai red curry. And at the top it was like with chicken, prawns, beef. And to me, I thought you just picked one. Like, oh yeah, I love the Thai red curry house special with chicken. But I'm not familiar fully, clearly, with the ways of ordering at a Chinese restaurant. And the short man who came over to take my order was quite disgruntled. And I got very embarrassed and I went red. And I actually broke sweat at how stupid I was. I was that embarrassed. And I ate all that. And I came home and I've laid down for too long. And I watched the nine o'clock news and I've got up and now my stomach is sore. Not that you need to know all this, but I suppose I'm so honest on this podcast that when my stomach is sore and I'm not feeling great, I feel you should know. But I'm on the telly more than Ryan Tuberty this weather, so I suppose there are positives this week. The TV ad is out. Alleluia. It only took two months, but now it's out for the world to see. Supermax. Dave Duke. Tenders. Great crack altogether. So, I might have told you half the story of how I was approached by a TV production company in the UK that do a lot of work with Supermax. They seen that I had some comedic acting ability via my TikToks and Insta Reels. And they asked would I be interested. And of course, I was interested to go and do this. Ended up working with Tara McCormick and Pat McDonough, the Irish Ronald McDonald. I think they'd take great offence if I was to talk about McDonald's in the same sentence as Supermax. But it's the truth. Ronald McDonald, Pat McDonough, basically the same thing. One is a terrorising fictional character. The other one is Pat McDonough who is a sound man, got to meet him, met his wife, met most of his family. It's a very family-orientated business. We filmed the advert in a walled garden in Krill- Kilcreest in County Galway in May. Margarita uh, is the owner of the gardens, and she gives a full tour afterwards, sound woman, 
gas day. Filmed it with Wild Rice Productions. Grace couldn't be on set because she was pregnant and she's had her baby. Congratulations, Grace. Got to meet Rich, who is the only person I've said to in the last five years, holy fuck, you are tall. Jesus Christ, I thought you were smaller than me because I had one Zoom meeting with him. And for some reason, I just thought he was a short fella. I thought he was about four foot one. No slight on my short kings. Love you all. Doesn't matter what height you are. Whether you're the height of Hezbollah or you're the height of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I just thought this guy was shorter, but it turns out he's a big fucker. And I was looking up at him. So the one big question... Actually, no, there's been a few questions about the ad. Actually, I probably should tell you... I, I, sometimes I will assume that you know something that you don't. And a good radio presenter or a good podcast host assumes nothing and assumes you know fuck all. Not because I assume you are silly or not paying attention, but sometimes it's nice to be filled in on something. How many times have you listened to a radio show or a podcast and thought to yourself, I don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about because they don't fill you in. So in the TV ad, also you could be blind or you might not have a TV or you could be in jail. There could be many factors. Maybe you're in abroad. Maybe you're in Australia and you haven't seen it on TV yet. Maybe you listen to podcasts but you're not on social media. I'm going to assume nothing. So it's a 30 second ad and the start of the ad has me sitting on a picnic bench, a white one, on the left of your screen and I'm looking all dejected and I go, I can't believe she dumped me. And then, like a magical genie, a woman in a supermax outfit turns up. And she's like, shut your fucking mouth, Dave. Have some of these tenders. They're fresh. They're 100% Irish. And I go, ah, yeah, go on. So, and then, poof, Pat McDonough, the CEO and the founder of the company turns up. And he's like, that's right. And none of our competitors can say that. And then I eat a chicken tender. Then there's the jingle. Supermax, and we're done. That's the ad. That's on telly now. And I yet have to see it on the TV. That's bad English. I have yet to see the ad myself on the television screen. The questions that have come out of that ad are, number one, do you get free Supermax? No, I don't. I got paid a fee. And there will be no more Supermax. I did get one free muffin and ice cream voucher card that I have yet to... Uh, what, what's that word? Uh, avail of? Yeah, I've yet to avail of the voucher. And it's stuck in the visor of my car. So I will use that. Question number two, how many tenders did you go through? There was 40 takes... In all, so you must remember there was the wide shot of me on the bench, then there's a close-up of me on the bench, then there's to the left of the bench, to the right of the bench, then Tara's brought in, my co-star, then Pat McDonough's brought in. So overall, 40 takes, estimated that for 35, 36 of those takes, I had a chicken tender, I took a bite of a chicken tender. So that's a lot of chicken tenders. And I know... Me telling you this now, I don't expect you to believe me. But hear the truth from me. I enjoyed every bite of those tenders. Even when the chicken tenders got cold and the people from Supermax were apologising to me, every bite was lovely. Another thing, nobody has asked this, because why would they? Cold tenders are easier worked with than warm tenders. The warm chicken tenders or the hot chicken tenders, when I bit into them and tried to pull away, it got so messy. The threads of the chicken and it didn't look good on camera and I looked like a fool. But uh, when the chicken tenders got cold, the bite into them was clean. So know for a fact that the tender that I bite into on the TV was colder than it was warmer. Other questions about the ad. Are you going to do more TV? 
What are you thinking? Well, to be honest, I don't think that is my decision. This might be the one and only bit of TV work I ever do in my life. I have to accept that. Would I like to do more TV work? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? I'd love a crack at a game show. I'd be an excellent presenter. I know for a fact, and don't take this as cockiness, I would be better at a lot of those quiz shows than a lot of people that are presenting them. There are some horrendous presenters on TV quiz shows. I fucking love quizzes. I devised them myself. The Choose the Quiz was an original. The 100 Question Quiz that's on iRadio was an original. I'd format it. I'd build it. I'd do the music for it. I'd write the questions for it. I'd present it. And I'd be better than a load of those showers. Name and no names. At all, at all. If you want to see the TV advert, by the way, go to Instagram, Mr. Dave Duke. I'm happy with it. Hopefully we'll do a bit more work with Supermax. But what the future holds or what this advert means, it's literally a TV advert. It's on TV. I'm on TV. I enjoy doing it. Let's see what the future holds. It's not that deep. It's not that complicated. That's it. In a nutshell, really. It's a lot less complicated than RT. Can I get a ha oh, yeah? Ha oh, yeah? Last week's episode. Maybe by you, a regular, or maybe you're brand new and needed a different perspective on the Ryan Tuberty case other than what was coming from RT themselves or News Talk or Eamon Dunphy or Twitter. Maybe you just wanted to hear someone within the Irish media industry talking about the Tuberty experience. He's fucked in a nutshell. <laughs> I cannot see a way back for Tuberty onto RT Radio. And you're asking, Dave, why? Tell us your wisdom. Tell us your thoughts. I seen a way back from him until a letter came out this week that was written from D. Forbes, the Director General of RTE, in July 2020, promising Tuberty and his management company, NK, that for a five-year period, RT would not ask him to take a pay cut, would not to ask Tuberty to revise down his fees. And at that time in July 2020, I know personally, myself, I was on a 20% pay cut in iRadio. There were some people, managers, that were on a 30% pay cut in iRadio. And that went for nearly every radio job in the country. And it wasn't just radio jobs. Think of your own situation during COVID. Maybe you were on pop. Maybe you were laid off. Maybe your life was turned upside down and absolutely fucked. And at the same time that was happening, Tuberty was getting in writing that he couldn't and wouldn't take a pay cut. Not that it's not unforgivable. I think most things are forgivable. But that, to me, was one of the final nails in Tuberty's coffin, metaphorically speaking. But the decision is not mine to make, and my opinion matters little in this scenario. But you know who definitely won't let him back on the air? is his colleagues and his friends within RTE. Now, let me retract his friends within RTE and just go with colleagues and staff, his producers, his researchers, those who work within his radio show team for a fraction of the money that he's on. I know myself that if Fanula Corbett was on a 20% pay cut, and I was getting a letter signed by my CEO that I wouldn't take a pay cut for the next five years, I wouldn't expect to be forgiven or to be back on that show with with Fanula Corbett. But the RT saga rumbles on, and it gets us to a question that I was meant to answer last week. 
that was asked two weeks ago. But here we are now, and I answering the question by a lovely podcast listener. And I feel this deserves to be answered outside the regular podcast questions. It is, do you ever worry about yourself and Fanula Corbett falling out on the show? And I believe this question was inspired by Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby falling out from this morning. Now, I'd just like to state that my situation with Fanula is a lot different to Philip Schofield's situation with Holly Willoughby. Number one, Fanula Corbett has a lot more of a backbone than Holly Willoughby ever had and ever will. Number two, Fanula Corbett is more of a professional than Holly Willoughby. Number three, I'm not gay. Number four, I wouldn't run away with a young lad on the iRadio set because of number three that was stated. Number five, I wouldn't run away with a young one on the iRadio set because I'm not that way inclined. Don't you think that this is a homophobic thing? Don't you dare turn it into one. Absolutely not. Number six. My brother's not a nonce. And number seven. Well, there's no need for another seven. I think I've outlined six things is enough. Oh, yes, there is a number seven. Neither me nor Fanula jumped a queue to go visit a dead queen. That's number seven. So there are a lot of differences, but this is where this question came from. This is where it was inspired. Radio couples, media couples falling out. Now, you must remember, at the very start, me and Fanula were just put together. Gary Curran, who was doing 3 to 6 on iRadio, decided he had enough of the place. Love Gary. Loved Gary. Past and present and for future. He's just a cool motherfucker. He's a good guy. But he was getting out of the radio industry for his own reasons. And I know what they are, but I'm not sharing them with you because I feel them myself. So I was offered the position of joining that three to six show and I was not saying no because that's what I was working towards. So me and Fanula were married in radio matrimony. Get on there now together and away ye go. And that's what we did. Fanula was leading my hand. I felt we were far too news serious for the first while on that show. I didn't and it's still a regret of mine, and Fanula knows this, that I didn't try and impose my ideas a little bit more. Also, it was said to us, oh, you shouldn't change anything for the first six months of the show, which I feel was a mistake. But we got on with things, and we were only on air a year together, and COVID hit, and the show changed dramatically from late 2021 to what the show is today. It's gone through a few iterations. At the start, shaky, trying to get on together. It's grand, but it's not It's not even good. It's not even great to a good, solid show. Then COVID, we went a fucking too COVID heavy. Kind of fucked up. Hindsight's a great thing, but from... COVID coming in, it was COVID every day, every day, three hours. We should have been the crack during the COVID with a little bit of seriousness. But no, we were depressing every fucker that would turn on the radio with COVID, COVID, COVID. Then the working from home setups. I didn't have enough equipment. I had uh, shitty laptops, shitty mics, very hard to produce a show. It's just, it's a bad period in my radio uh, life. Well, it certainly isn't a good one. Maybe mediocre, but certainly not good. But shit turned round, and I feel we've built a very strong relationship and a very strong bond. I'm not an easy person to work with. I am pedantic about stuff. I choose the beds, the music that we use to talk over... I make sure that we have all our dingers correct. That's a triple correct. That's a single correct. That's our wrong buzzer. This is our applause. These are things that not every radio presenter thinks of 
or concerns them. People will go in and they will use all the tools that's there, no matter how generic or how old they are. But to me, that would drive me fucking insane. Also, I'm very set about how things are done in particular ways. Phone calls, editing, interviews. I have a vision and I want to enact it on that show. And sometimes Fanula is probably and I'm speaking for her here, frustrated with how I act sometimes. How fucking annoyed I would get about a little mistake on the show. I am superbly hard on myself. Do not think that I'm going, Fanula Corbett, what you said there was absolutely idiotic. It's not like that. But I'm highly strong, highly motivated, highly... I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm like that scene out of Wolf of Wall Street. It's all heady, very heady. I'm always thinking, going. Wouldn't say I'm twitchy or ADHD, but I'm a highly strong guy. And Fanula has to deal with that. So I have a massive amount of sympathy for her. That has to deal with this creative genius that is bustling on front of her and before her. Getting to your question. Am I conscious of us falling out? Absolutely. I try to be very considerate of Fanula Corbett's time. Sometimes there is a tendency that I'm included in a conversation but Fanula is left out. And there's a couple of factors for that. One of them being that Fanula is head of news, which is a very senior role within any radio station. Fanula is responsible for our news output. Have you heard Fanula reading the news? She's a fucking wizard. So there are not many shows in the entire country where you have your head of news on your drive time show. These are two of the biggest things together, co-presenter on a drive time show and your head of news. They don't combine a package. We also don't have a producer, but we get it done. We do it well. That's one of the factors why sometimes Fanula can be chopped out of an email, not CC'd in, and I'm always conscious to make sure that Fanula is aware of what's going on, Sometimes I let things fall through the cracks, but for Zoom meetings or interviews or even going to visit a listener by request or something like that, I always make sure that Fanula is incorporated in some way. Now, we wouldn't live in each other's pockets. Of course, we have a friendship. We're not going out for dinner every evening. We're not calling over to each other's houses. It's not like that. But fuck me. Don't stand in the middle of us. I'd take a bullet for Fanula in the radio industry in there. Because it can be cutthroat. And it can be sometimes not a great industry to work in. And Sometimes all you have is your co-host. All you have is each other. I'd die for Fanula. And I think you've heard me going on before about how much I think of Fanula. Professionally, she is too good for iRadio. She is too good for RTE. She's too good for the media industry in Ireland in general. That woman, I don't know what she's paid in iRadio. I just know for a fact it's not enough. If she was an RTE, she'd be getting 150 grand. Sometimes I want to see Fanula go to RTE to unlock her true potential of making balls of cash for being so good at the news. Does that satisfy your question about do I worry about me and Fanula getting on? I do. I worry about us falling out. I feel I'd have to do something horrifically wrong for Fanula not to talk to me. But I also am very conscious of how highly strong I am and how I can be difficult to work with sometimes. But my greatest frustration comes from something not reaching its true potential. Whether that is a radio show, a radio station, 
or a person. And that is the subject of today's Gospel. A letter from Dave Duke to the listeners of the Dave Duke podcast. Fuck the haters and reach your true potential. For too long you've held yourself back. Why, my child? Is it because of embarrassment? Is it because of your family of naysayers or friends? My child, the best piece of advice I could give you is that nobody really gives a fuck about what you do other than yourself. If you were to strip bollock naked and walk down the main street of your nearest town right now, it would all be forgotten about in two days flat. So why do you hold yourself back from your passions? For no good reason at all. There will always be naysayers. There will always be negativity. But in this life you can be an energy giver or an energy taker. Be an energy giver. If not to anyone else but to yourself. If you need to cut wasters or fucking clowns of friends out of your life, then do it. They're not really friends. Why are you hanging around with that fucking clown? Because that's all they are, a fucking clown. What's wrong with you? Get going. Pick up a paintbrush. Strum a guitar. Paint shitty pictures and put them on Instagram. Nobody really gives a shit. But when you're on your deathbed, thinking back about what you could have done, it's too fucking late. Now is the time. Reach your true potential. Fuck the haters. Fuck the lot of them. Get up that yard. And that is the gospel according to Dave Duke. You may go in peace to love and to serve the podcast. A fucking men. I know that was shouty and ranty, but I mean that gospel. I do. You have to take it on board. Please, if you have an interest in something, whether it is playing competitive FIFA, whether it is being the best lawn mower in the the entire country, if it is wanting to raise two sheep in your back garden, if it is opening a valet business, if it is opening a coffee cart, I don't care what it is. Please consider doing it. And I know financial reasons might be a barrier, but if it is psychological and if the reasons you are not reaching your true potential is because of what someone else will think of you, then fuck you for thinking that and fuck them. Get on it like a car bonnet. It's something that frustrates me so very much. Seeing someone with so much potential, potentially yourself, and all that is holding them back is themselves. I know it's a very simplistic view of the world, and I know this might not apply to everybody, but if it motivates you by at least one more percent than you are motivated currently to do the thing that you've always wanted to do, then so be it. I will take that on my shoulders. I am fucking on fire! And now for some questions. Great question. The price of a coffee up in Dublin is roughly €4 Euro for a latte. 4 80 ish with syrup. Would you pay it? David. Hello, David. Yes. Yes, I would. Like a fucking fool, because I love coffee. And I drink so much of it that I'd be like, oh my God, 480, that's disgusting. Give me two, please. Thank you. I wouldn't pay 480 for an Americano. I wouldn't pay four euro for an Americano. That's what I usually stick with. But if I was uh, in a spot where I had to pay for it, I would, and then I wouldn't go back. I'd find a regular 
or a local that was doing Americanos for a lot cheaper than €4. Euro. Personally, I even think 320 is a little bit piss-ticky when it comes to Americanos, especially when so little goes into an Americano. Oh, I can't wait for a business owner to write me a fucking stinker of a message. You haven't thought about staff, and I, I have thought about it, you clown. You stop charging so much for an Americano. Plans for after beat on the street. Few Corona. Comes from... Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Beat on the Street is a free event happening in Ballina next Thursday. Let me look at the calendar to make sure I give you the accurate date because by the time you're listening to this, it might be all over. 13th of July in Ballina, County Mayo, from 7 to 10. We're putting a big F off stage on the main street. Everybody's welcome. And then I'm playing in Bar Square or Times Square nightclub in Ballina. So I'm literally making a pig of myself in Ballina. If Biden can do it, why can't I? Advice for someone starting a career in media comes from Sean. Sean, my advice for starting a career in media is don't bother your hole. Sean, please ask that question again at a better time because this evening's podcast is a mad one and I'm liable to say anything to you other than giving you actual good advice. From Detective Dave, should Dave Duke be headhunted by the government to run 2FM? Yes, I would very much enjoy that. Please come to me with nothing less than €200,000. You think I'm joking? Okay, €250,000 just for you laughing at me. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's podcast. I can imagine the feedback from tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, at whatever time you're listening to this podcast, is going to be phenomenal. As phenomenal as the 151 people who have stamped their authority on Spotify by saying, I'm giving Dave Duke five stars. Thank you. And if you haven't done it already, do it now. You've reached this far. Surely you've enjoyed something. Five stars means so much to me. It means more than the Imru Award I won last year. It means more to me than my family. It means more to me than Pat McDonough's delicious Supermax chicken fucking tenders. It means the algorithm is told to serve this to more people. Just like Supermax <laughs> chicken tenders. So give five stars, please. No no bother if not. No hassle if not. But if you do, fair play. As always, for inquiries, Mr. Dave Duke on Instagram, you can email dave at davejuke.ie. I'm going to have a good lie down now. But until we speak again, promise me this. Take it, savage. Handy.